Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I wanted to talk about making your paintings work, especially if you are using photographs. I always work from photographs from my animal paintings. It would be very hard to work from real life and also quite impractical when doing commissions. This week I thought I would show you this cat painting and give you some tips on how to make your art work when using photography. Let's get into the time lapse video and I'll talk about what I did to make my painting work. Number one, do I need to adjust my photo? In this instance, yes I did. Originally the cat was sat against a very strong teal background. I love the colour teal, but in this painting it would have overpowered my cat. This is because the background was a very strong saturated colour. The colours in my cat are very subtle and muted and so the subtlety of the temperature shifts between warm and cool were lost. I adjusted the value of the background and also the colour. I was able to do this because I was faithful to my light source. The cat is sat in front of a window and so the light is hitting this side and the shadow is behind the cat on this side. As long as I still mirror this, I can get away with quite a bit. I have not changed my temperature. The background is still cooler than my cat. So if you're going to change things in your photo, always bear in mind what the light source is doing. If you would like a bit more info on changing your reference photos and backgrounds, then have a look at this video on my channel where I show you exactly how to do it. Number two. How am I going to paint my subject? Remember that your photo is two dimensional. My job as an artist is to interpret what I'm seeing so I can create mood, atmosphere and emotion. The tools I have available to me that will help are my brushwork and I can introduce a central point of focus. Dealing with a central point of focus first, as this is easier to explain, I need to think about where I want my viewer to look. With animals, it's really straightforward as the interest is usually in their face. I will keep this area in focus and I will begin to loosen brush strokes, lose detail and edges. For example, in this area in the tail, I have lost this edge here. It is not really obvious where the tail ends and the background begins because it is not necessary to the success of the painting. I am mimicking how the eye sees objects. They focus in on one area and then begin to blur out. Tight brushwork and small brushes will produce more detail and detail will distract my eye. I want to keep detail in my area of interest, so it is important to select the right brush. If I am trying to create lost edges, it is harder to do with small flat or round brushes. If you would like to understand more about lost and soft edges, have a look at this video on my channel. There are many ways to lay my paint strokes and different brushes make different marks. In a painting, I have an ability to lay my brush strokes in a way that helps describe my objects by adding different textures. Photos can't do this. So for example, I can blend as I have done in these areas I can pull wet paint into wet paint, as I have done in these areas here. I can be more vigorous with my strokes, as I have across the cat's back. I can use big brushes, small brushes, long-haired soft brushes, my finger, a paper towel. I can use transparent paint, opaque paint. The list is endless and each method will give a different effect. For example, if you were to watch the time-lapse video back, you will notice the majority of my time spent painting was the face and the tail. Those areas took me about six hours to paint. That area on the back that is rough and sketchy was painted in 20 minutes. It has significantly less paint on it than, say, the tail. It was painted using more transparent paint. That is why it has that broken colour effect with very obvious paint strokes. The transparency of the paint means I can manipulate it much more easily. The more opaque my paint is, the less easily it moves about on my painting. But thicker paint does allow me to drag colours into each other. If you are having trouble doing this, 
The reason will be that you either have too much medium in your paint, like linseed oil, you are using transparent paint when opaque paint would be more effective, or you are using the wrong brush. It may be pulling the paint off rather than allowing you to drag. The tail area was actually very hard to paint and I had to build up those paint strokes gradually using flat brushes and large soft coma brushes. If you watch the video back again to see how I did it, look at the order I am painting in, the brushes I am using and how much pulling and pushing I do of that paint. Getting that fluffy effect will not be achieved by painting every hair, but by editing out the detail using softer brushes and opaque paint in the light areas. Very often with brushwork, there is not a set of rules to follow. It is more about feeling your way around a painting and building up gradually to your thicker paint areas, as I did here. It took me a while to get to it. Too much paint too quickly will cause me to lose control of my painting. Paint straight from the tube behaves better when painting wet on wet. The most important thing is to understand how the paint handles. Transparent paint handles differently from semi-transparent paint, which handles differently from opaque paint. Flat brushes will make different marks to round brushes and also long hair brushes. Flat brushes will take the paint off. I have learned through practice the optimum amount of paint I need to add in the early stages of a painting. But remember this may be different between artists. How much paint I can add before losing control may be different to someone else. The only way to improve your brushwork is to experiment with your colours and your brushes and learn how to handle it in a way that works for you. Number three, edit out your detail. It is important to remember that photos are generally over sharpened and also pick up every single detail. It is very tempting to have a photo right next to your painting and copy every detail from it. The result will be a painting full of detail, but not interpretation. Some practical steps you can use to help avoid doing this is to pin a second photo at about two meters distance from where you are working. In the early stages of the painting, only refer to this photo. You will not be able to paint the detail because you will not be able to see it and it will help you make editing choices. Once you are ready to paint your areas of interest, switch to the photo next to your workstation. This will really help you not focus on the detail in your photo. And there we have it, the finished painting. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.